Thomas Edison, Marie Curie, the Wright brothers, Albert Einstein. Names we are familiar with because of inventions and discoveries that have changed the world and the trajectory of our future. The history books are full of individuals whose timely genius created a ripple effect of change to the world around them, each discovery paving the way for even more advances in science and technology. So let's imagine for a moment, what would the world be like if people like the Wright brothers or Albert Einstein were never born? Well, truth be told, we'd still be flying around the planet and deeper into space. Somebody eventually somewhere would have discovered that E equals MC squared. Now, while the pace and timelines of these discoveries would be different, eventually with time, we are destined to continue furthering our understanding of both science and technology. So let's look at a few other individuals who influence our lives. What would the world be like if Picasso was never born, or Frida Kahlo, Van Gogh, Rembrandt? What about Warhol or Pollock, Rockwell or Rothko? If these artists were never born, would the world ever know their art? These people might not influence our understanding of science, but they help us understand our own soul. In life and in death, through their art and the creations they leave behind, they give people purpose. The inspiration of an artist manifested into a creation that is experienced and then shared by one person and then the next and the next and the next. That experience of being inspired, of not just seeing or hearing a work of art, but feeling it. While it's different from person to person, it's not a stretch to say that most people find some sort of comfort through their exposure to art. And to me, that illustrates why the arts are equally as important as science and why artists are equally as important as scientists and inventors. I grew up in an art gallery. My father started his first gallery back in the 1970s, and I was fortunate to grow up not just surrounded by a lot of art, but also getting to know a lot of great artists personally. I got to see how artists lived, what motivated them to create, and I got to see other people be introduced to and fall in love with their work. I got to see the motivation and the inspiration that art creates. I'm also a huge nerd. I love computers and technology. I love to write code and use it to build things. And to me, there's an artistry in that process. And something I've learned in my professional capacity as a coder working inside and outside the art world, and that's that the art world operates counterproductive to the rights and interests of the artists it celebrates. In other words, that individual artist, that one-of-a-kind human being whose life stories and creations of which the art world revolves has very little influence on what happens to their artwork once it leaves their hands. You see, the art world can be broken down into four main stakeholders. We have the artists, our creators. We have the market, which is made up of art dealers, art galleries, auction houses, and a whole array of service providers. We have our institutions, our public art galleries, our museums, our academic and nonprofit organizations, and we have the public participants of the art world, the people who take ownership and responsibility for individual works of art. Now, each one of these stakeholders is completely codependent on each other. You remove any one of them from the equation, and the art world just doesn't even exist. In 2016, the global art market was valued at $45 billion. Now, a lot of people inside and outside the art world look at this number and they suggest that the problem here is an uneven distribution of that economy. The story of a starving artist living in poverty while their works of art go on to be worth millions. Now, in my opinion, if this is the only way that you're looking at the art world, you're actually missing out on the real starvation. And that's because there's something besides money that all of these stakeholders have a very strong vested interest in and it's something called provenance. Provenance could be defined as the chronology of the ownership, custody, or location of a historical object. 
It's essentially the story behind a work of art, where it has come from and where it has been. It's the authoritative record on that work of art's history. The point of creation is when the first pieces of provenance are developed, title, date of creation, size, medium, attribution, copyright. And then the market steps in and generates all kinds of provenance by conducting primary and secondary market sales, by performing appraisals and valuations, by doing estate and insurance planning. And then our curators, our researchers, and our historians, they use this provenance and create more provenance as they build upon their own collections and mandates. Provenance, therefore, is the key ingredient in understanding the history of art. What artists are really starved for is the ability to have influence and authority over their own provenance. Some of you may remember playing that telephone game back in school where you and your classmates stand in a line and a phrase is whispered from one person to the next, and by the end of the line, the phrase has inevitably changed. This is essentially how provenance information is managed in the art world today. As a work of art moves through the marketplace, especially in the early stages, information is easily lost. And when it comes time for an appraisal or evaluation, a lot of times that provenance has become, I got this painting from my uncle, and I don't know anything about it. And at that point, the artist and their legacy is gone. Information associated with the origins and locations of individual works of art typically comes from the market. In 2016, 63% of all market transactions were conducted by art dealers and art galleries. Of these organizations, 80% are single operators with no employees. I work in this world, and I can tell you that the most common form of record keeping used here is pen and paper. The other 37% of market transactions are conducted by auction houses. Of these transactions, 60% are done by just 10 organizations. I also work in this world, and auction houses might be a little bit better at their record keeping, but the industry is completely unregulated, and there is absolutely no requirement for accuracy. So while the art market is strong financially, the art world as a whole suffers because of a lack of transparency and the disconnect that happens between an artist and their work. So how do we maintain that connection? How do you enable an industry to be historically responsible in how it manages its data and do it in a way that protects the rights of the artist? In my opinion, it's time for the art world to adopt a standardized means of artwork identification. Assign a globally unique ID number to every work of art created. Global unique IDs are everywhere. Commerce as we know it today would not exist without them. Just about everything you buy has a barcode on it. Every day, millions of packages are shipped all around the world, each with a global tracking number. Now, I once had an artist say to me that the thought of putting a barcode on his artwork made him want to puke. The perception here being that the barcode is a symbol of commercialization. We need to move past this perception and look at the function and utility that a global unique ID can provide. The publishing industry has the ISBN. The international standard book number is a 10 to 13 digit number that gets assigned to a book before it is published and sold in traditional or online bookstores. The ISBN is also used to organize databases that make it very easy to figure out when and where a book was published and what type of copyright might be associated. Every vehicle on the road has a VIN number, a vehicle identification number that is stamped on the vehicle before it leaves the factory. This number makes automobile insurance possible, and several countries have adopted systems that use the VIN to track service and accident history, protecting the consumer from fraud and providing a framework to, to identify and investigate theft. Assigning a globally unique ID to every work of art created would have a similar benefit to the art world. It would provide a definitive record on that work of art's origins and detailed information on copyright or reuse. It would reduce the complexity in identifying forgeries and reduce the risk during the process of authentication and appraisal. Now granted, the art world is a cottage industry with many small participants, each individually lacking resources and knowledge. And that's why the art world needs to learn a few lessons from the tech world and begin to embrace the concepts of the open source model. 
When open collaboration is embraced, it can enable small teams of people to do great things. And the building blocks are already there. Many industries have begun to adopt in and invest in an open source technology called the blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized ledger of digital events, a ledger that doesn't need any single organization to function or remain accessible. In the terms of tracking and storing authoritative information about works of art, the blockchain holds immense potential. And it's something that many believe will have major transformative effects on the world all around us. Imagine a world where at the point of creation, an artist stores the initial pieces of provenance in a permanent record. A record that is unalterable and can be attached to the work of art, yet exists digitally and independent of any individual, organization, or government. It would be, without a doubt, the most authoritative piece of information that could ever exist on that work of art. And it would become the pivotal block to which all other events of provenance could be associated. And regardless of the journey that that artwork takes, the provenance always leads back to the point of creation. This guarantees the artist, at the very least, a seat at the table. Imagine a world where the work of any artist could be authenticated and attribution or credit given. Imagine a world where the stories around a work of art's influence can be more easily captured and preserved, where the people who come in contact with that work of art can add their stories to that permanent record. Because this is where the real inspiration happens with art. It's the one-on-one -on -one time you spend with it. It's that mural you walk past every day that makes Monday mornings less Monday-ish. <laughs> or it's that painting that's hanging in your grandparents' house that catches your eye when you enter the room and makes your imagination soar. Art speaks to us on an individual level regardless of our interest in having it do so. And the work of any artist has the power to change the world, even if it's only ever seen once. Thank you.